Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Cambridge Audio and the model number is Azure and it's a 540A but this is the version 2 amplifier. In terms of general specifications power output is 60 watts RMS into 8 ohm speakers and then this increases to 90 watts if you have 4 ohms and then frequency response is 5 hertz up to 50 kilohertz and total harmonic distortion is 0.002% you have a range of inputs so you can connect to the auxiliary CD tuner and DVD an MP3 and also a tape input but you cannot connect a moving magnet type cartridge via a turntable directly this would require an external preamp and then you have individual controls for bass, treble and balance headphone socket for private listening and also the direct mode on the front of the amplifier enables you to switch out the tone control circuits and it also provides a pre-amplifier output as well and maybe you want to connect that to another amplifier and then in terms of dimensions, width, depth and height, 430 by 320 by 100 and the weight of the amplifier is 7.4 kilograms. It does come with a remote control and that can be used to select any of your inputs, put the amplifier into standby mode as well as operating the volume control as well. You can also have a second set of speakers connected and there is a switch on the front face of the amp where you can select. Now when you take the top cover off this amplifier, what you can see is it's an extremely dusty environment. But that's not uncommon so what you have to do is to clean out all of that dust and debris so on this shot you can see that that has been done this is post repair so all the circuit boards have all been cleaned but you'll probably find that it's more of a multi-stage process this amplifier hasn't been stored in a humid environment so if it's in a damp environment you'll find that that's going to take you a lot more time because it will be sticky now to get into this amplifier once you remove the torque screws on the top if you want to start to work on it, what you see here is the infinite number of screws. So whenever you work on these amplifiers, you're going to have to do a lot of removal. And it does take time. Uh, just make sure you don't lose any because some of them are very small. Now, in terms of what was the issue with this amplifier when it came into the workshop? Well, it had a number of different issues. So what I'll do is I'll step through each one as we go through. There was one particular fault which is concerning the input side of the amplifier but as I say we'll get to that in a little while so the next thing which we're focusing on is the startup circuit board and what I've done is I've just put an arrow and this is indicating the power startup relay now what happens is that the microcontroller receives the required voltage and it is always operating unless you go to the rear of the amplifier and you operate the toggle switch which will completely turn off all of the power to the amp on the version 1 amplifier, it didn't have a power switch like that, and it was permanently powered. This startup relay is energised via the microcontroller, and when that happens, then what you'll find is that the large toroidal transformer will be energised and it will provide the power to the main output stage of the amplifier. You also have as well, and I'll show that later, three regulators. One is to regulate the DC voltage to the microcontroller, and then you also have a plus and minus 15 volt supply which supplies the input selection IC and the tone control circuits which are a mixture of conventional components or discrete components and operational amplifiers. Now I know historically that these amplifiers get good use and the amplifier switching from standby mode back to normal operation over time the contacts inside of these relays just wear and become oxidized so I just simply replace them. Now the same relay is also used here on the speaker selection board. Now on the version 1 amp there was only one of these relays. On the version 2 as you see that there is two. So if we operate the push button from the front you'll hear that the secondary relay will operate and then connect. And then the next level of work that you have to do is associated with the brown glue. And I think it's kind of unfair in a way like to the owners because you buy an amplifier and you expect it to carry on running which is fine and okay electronic components fail but this brown glue just results in the amplifiers failing and it's all of course outside the warranty period and they seem to be very liberal in using this glue they, they put it all around any electrolytic capacitors or any component that they felt you know had a weight to it to provide mechanical strength but it, it goes conductive and it also goes corrosive as well and that results in electronic components failing so this is on multiple circuit boards so the board that you see in here is the power amplifier circuit board 
and this is one area so these are two of the 2200 microfarad electrolytic capacitors and then here what you can see is on this edge of the board again where you see the vertical power supply components you have this liberal spreading of glue and then just to the right hand side there is a small zener diode and then here what you see is R42 so another common area and then you can see that the glue is contaminated that resistor so what I'm advising you to do is even if you make an electrical resistance measurement of that resistor what I found was that it had started to increase in value now that value of that resistor is 100 kilo ohms so you need to first of all wear eye protection use a plastic scraping tool and remove all of that hard brown lacquer stroke glue and then any components that you see that have been contaminated with it you need to replace them and then that will ensure that they're not going to fail from the contamination that was there before now you can remove the input board stroke tone board which also has the front fascia connected to it completely from the amplifier chassis I can just put that to one side I can then work on that separately and then here I can just lift up the main amp board and again I can work on that now you can see all these different wires and connectors probably not the best circuit layout if you look at many amplifier designs you don't get these wires sort of spanning across the circuit board and remember as well with these amplifiers the circuit tracks are not the best they're quite thin so again be very very careful when you're resoldering any of the dry joints and then on this circuit board this is the input stroke tone control board and this is the low voltage power supply so this is where the connectors that you see there are coming from the toroidal and this is the low voltage area and what you can see is that there is also brown glue contaminating one of the diodes there which is D5 so as a matter of course I've replaced that diode and removed any of that corrosive glue and then here what you can see are the voltage regulators as I mentioned previously and these are for the plus or minus 15 volt supply and also the 5 volt supply just be aware that if maybe you have a 100 hertz power hum it could be associated with those smaller electrolytic capacitors which are quite close to the power regulators drying out so you might need to replace them and then what we're focusing on now is an extract from the service manual and as it clearly states it's the input circuit diagram and the reason why I'm showing you this is that once we removed all of the brown glue and we replaced the contaminated components and also the three relays when the amplifier was put on to test all of the input channels were working fine and there was no issues associated for example with intermittent loss of sound but if you connected an input to the auxiliary it was really really low and almost distorted audio but everything else was working fine now what I found and I'll zoom in and provide some photographs in a moment is that you had multiple failures of components so the first thing was the U14 which is a dual operational amplifier which is an NE5532N it got a crack right the way through it so it had overheated and failed so that integrated circuit was replaced but then when the amplifier was retested what you found was that the input selection IC which is the surface mount Toshiba TC9163AF it failed and I presume because of the failure of the dual op amp now there are two 100 ohm resistors which are feeding the supply to the input selection IC now sometimes you can see some level of discoloration but as you'll see from the photographs they'd heated up considerably so when we zoom in on the operational amplifier U14 you can see it you can see that crack and then that discoloration so straightforward task of just fitting brand new Texas Instruments op amp into there and then here what you can see are those two feed resistors R98 and R99 and you can see they're almost burnt out and then here you can see the input selection IC which is the Tosh Eber device and again because it's surface mode you just need to use the necessary desoldering equipment to remove it and again if you look at the circuit tracks going to that IC they're extremely thin and also as well not the highest quality so just be very very careful with how much heat you apply and make sure that the IC is fully desoldered before attempting to move it because you could rip apart or rip away one of the circuit tracks for me on these types of amplifiers I just use a precision pair of side cutters where I can go in between each one of the pins and I just snip it out and then here what I'm doing is I'm just showing you the user control so this is the base treble and balance control and also you can see the volume control potentiometer so those along with the switches were clean with deoxy 
And then here what I'm showing you is a zoomed in view of the left channel. And this is the amplifier stages of the unit. So you can see that the input circuit as it comes from the front control board and then the main output sank and devices. So these are SAP 15N and 15P and they're Darlington devices so they can source more current. And then what you're looking to do is to make the adjustment. So it's very easy on this amplifier. It uses a 10 turn multi preset, which enables you to set the bias current through the output devices very precisely. And then you just measure across one of the emitter resistors. And then if we focus or we zoom in, you can see here that it's connected to the multimeter. It's been on for about 20 minutes and it's slightly high. So you just make the adjustment until you bring it back down to 13 millivolts, as you see here. And of course you would repeat the same exercise then for the other channel. And here we're just showing after adjustment. So quite an extensive repair. I'd say that this took maybe about two, nearly three hours, just because of the level of work that was required. And here you can see the various components. So on the right hand side, you can see the individual relays, all the same type and voltage, 24 volt. Just to the top part, that's where I've cut out the Toshiba input selection IT. You can see the damaged op amp. And then the smaller components, one is a 1N4007 rectification diode. And then the other ones are the two feed resistors and just the 100K resistor on the amp board, which had become contaminated. And then all that was left to do was really just to place the amplifier into test. And it ran for about three to four hours, just to make sure that we had reliable operation. And give the amplifier a thorough clean. But this amplifier, you know, it wasn't really in bad condition. Sometimes you do get amplifiers which I'm sort of convinced have maybe come from a recycling centre. Sometimes you see that I think uh, people purchase them from auction websites and then contact me via the YouTube channel and then uh, send them in then for refurbishment. So that sort of brings us to the end of this tutorial. So I appreciate you stopping by. And again, if you need any help, support or information, by all means, email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com and I'll be happy to provide any guidance that you may require. So, until the next time, I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye-bye.